Now that we know the basics of Remote Connect and the Skater Pack 470, we're going to go ahead and actually connect the Skater Pack. That way, when we when we make our changes, we can just write those changes immediately, see those changes implement, and uh, build our logic from there. So let's go. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do, we know that this IP address is 172.16.1.200. If you want to confirm um, how you're connecting to this SCADA pack, you could do that as well. So if you go under PC communication settings, double click on that. It'll take a second and another uh, tab will open here. In here, this is how you're actually connecting to the SCADA pack. So this logic that we've created here, we haven't written any of this stuff, but we know that this IP is a default and this is how we're going to communicate to it. So we've got to make sure that that one's the same it's in there. Make sure your DMP3 address is zero because that's default as well. So once we have that set up, now we have to set up our computer to make sure it has a static IP to connect to that Staccato pack. So hit start and type in network and there'll be something called network status comes up. So click on that. When that comes up, um, go down to advanced network settings, go change adapter options. Once we're there, you'll have a couple different adapters. One thing I usually do to check which one's which is I'll unplug it. And so I'll see it, plug it back in. So I just unplugged my switch and I identified that this is the switch that I wanna plug into. You can plug directly right into your SCADA pack as well. So just plug into your SCADA pack. So from there, we want to double click on this network card that I'm plugged into. Under this network card, we want to go properties down at the left here. Under properties, we want to go internet protocol version four. And then here we want to use a static IP address. I only have the SCADA pack plugged into this network. So I'm just going to use one less than the um, default IP. So 172.16.1 dot 199 because I know that the default's 200 and then I'll just click the subnet and it'll auto populate we don't really care because we're not going through router so just leave it as is hit okay okay close we can just leave this window open just in case we messed anything up minimize it minimize this window as well um, so we want to test to make sure that we're connecting to that SCADA pack first before we actually do any of the SOC software configuration. So to get into command prompt and ping it, type in CMD. Command prompt will come up. In command prompt, we want to type in PING for ping space 172.16.1.200, which is the IP address of my SCADA pack. Hit enter. And you'll see that you're getting replies here. Everything's good, 0% losses. That's what a good ping should look like. So we know, now know that we're actually connected to the SCADA pack. So when you go back into the software, we know that it's a software issue. We run into a problem and not a hardware issue. Once we've done that, we could go back to our configuration settings. We could hit this online button right here. Go online, press that. Because we cold booted these SCADA packs at the start of this um, training lab, what it does is it resets it. So when it resets it, you need to either give it a new password or select it. the device does not require a password. Uh, there's a law in California that you need this. So they've implemented this on every SCADA pack. So it's there. I always just click device does not require a password, but if you want a password, you could put it in. Go to uh, device does not require a password, hit apply, and that won't come up until you uh, reset that SCADA pack again. Hit close. So now you're online with the SCADA pack. You can see the serial number, the firmware version, all that great stuff, um, the RAM battery voltage. Um, you can see all the information here. You can see licensing if you have any. If you hit refresh, you can see if you have a real flow or the DMP3 licensing logic, it'll tell you all the information about the logic that's currently running in it, as well as all the objects that's running in the SCADA pack. So that's how you connect to it. Um, next video, we're going to change some of the configuration and write it to that SCADA pack and see what it does. Thanks for watching this video.